All right, so that was an attempt to take some Beethoven techniques and directly apply them to a jazz standard. I'm gonna go over this in today's lesson. Hey everybody, and welcome to my channel. My name is Noah Kelman, and I'm here to teach you everything that I know about modern jazz and improvised piano. Today, I'm super excited because this is the second video in my Steal from Classical series. Now, I honestly think that most textures and techniques have been actually covered by classical composers in the past, and then we have just adapted them to modern music. So in this series, I'm having an absolute blast checking out the pieces of the great classical composers and taking very specific textures sometimes even just one measure and thinking about how we can actually apply those specifically to jazz and or improvised piano in general. Honestly, these are also great for composition or songwriting as well. And a lot of these have been used in those scenarios. So stay tuned. Today we are about to dive into the great work of Beethoven, one of my absolute favorite composers of all time. But really quick, if you're new to the channel, please consider clicking subscribe and hitting the little bell so that you don't miss any more videos just like this one. Also, if you already know my content, please hit that like button. I really appreciate it and it really helps me out. All right, let's steal some textures from Beethoven. So one of my favorite pieces of all time is the Pathetique Sonata. In fact, I used to literally fall asleep listening to this every single night as a little kid on a stereo, you know, uh, playing it directly from a CD. So let's start here. So there's a great section of the piece that goes a little bit like this. Not a classical pianist, so probably doesn't sound amazing. That's fine. The point here is, can we take the textures here? Right off the bat, I like to dive in and think, what is this texture actually accomplishing? So our left hand really is the motor. Our right hand is playing the melody, but of course it's also responding to the melody below our left hand. And I think that's a really key part of this. So left hand, we're just playing a simple triad. And we're going like that, right? Five finger on the bottom kind of the bass note, and this is an E flat minor triad in second inversion. We've got that pretty melody in the right hand. So how can we take this technique and apply it to jazz? Let's talk about that right now. Of course, we've got this rhythm. It works great in 4-4. Four, four. So what if we're going to take a standard here? I love to do this. Let's take a standard. Let's take, how about it could happen to you? So we're going to take a, let's take an E flat major triad in first inversion here. So, so that's our left hand. And then we'll play the melody. Wow, that works really nice. Okay, so what if we actually did this? Okay, all right, now I'm getting a little lost. Okay, so I kind of messed up there, got my octaves a little weird. We could go a little higher in the left hand. Now that is like a very direct way of doing this, right? So, and it's really, really pretty in my opinion. We're already kind of doing something extremely unique here. How often have you heard jazz pianists do this in solo piano? I could be wrong, but I feel like it's not that common, right? We tend to rely on our jazz piano solo piano techniques. This is a really cool way to sound more unique and find new textures that might actually be really, really pretty for jazz. So how about we try something else here. What if now we embellish this a little bit more, get a little bit more um, experimental with seventh chords, a little bit less triadic harmony, 
Um, what if we don't stick quite as much the exact rhythm, but just take the concept of kind of a left hand motor and right hand kind of responding one way or another. What if we also use this bottom note as kind of a melody note? Let's get even a little bit more out there. Okay, so honestly, I'm just having a blast here. I'm really sorry for just kind of playing all this stuff, but I just kind of want to show you how I think about this. And this is one of those things I can't fully put into words. You have to actually take a technique like this and experiment with it and see what you can do. But I'm pointing out the techniques that I think can be most useful to steal from someone like Beethoven. So for the rest of this tutorial, I won't go quite as crazy um, using these techniques. So another really fun technique in this piece is this one. Okay, so I haven't done that in like two years, although I did just do it a couple times right before that take. Um, so I probably got some of the notes wrong and that's fine. The point here for me is this technique. That's it, right? We could just take that one bar. So literally we just have E flat major triad here essentially. Right hand doing this little octave pattern. So we can hold the pinky and we get kind of a, a melody on top. We have it like this. Right hand works opposite. Got to take the technique and make it your own. Now, for those of you who are members of our Discord community, 
I would absolutely love to see what you specifically do with these techniques. I would love to challenge you to actually put these techniques into your playing and show us what you come up with. If you're not a member of the community, it's totally free to join. Just use the link in the description. Discord is basically an app that you can use. It's almost like a Facebook group, but in a separate app. You can join, we're all hanging out there, totally free again. Would love to see what you come up with. Also, if you have any other favorite Beethoven textures, let me know in the comments. I would love to maybe even dissect some of those in the future. So another really simple texture we can take from this is the following. And literally this is, I think, one measure here. That's it, right? So we have this octave. And we can just then jump to chords. Melody in the right hand. Let's try this again with It Could Happen To You. Now the final technique I want to go over today comes from the Moonlight Sonata. It is so simple, right? We're just doing little arpeggios in the right hand and these bass notes in the left hand. So can we apply this to something improvised of our own accord? All right, kind of lost it there at the end, but I think you get the point. For me, these are some of the Beethoven textures that we can immediately take and apply to our improvisation. Again, I don't hear this being done that often, so hopefully we can start a whole new concept here. This is something that I have been doing for quite a while, and I just love how it sounds, honestly. It, for me, it just gives us so many more interesting piano textures that we can use to break away from your classic, most common jazz solo piano techniques. Not that there's anything wrong with those, they sound fantastic, but for me, compositionally, improvisationally, doing this method of exploring our favorite techniques from classical pieces, even just one measure at a time, number one, gives us way more freedom than having to learn an entire piece every single time. 
and also gives us some awesome new ideas. So I hope that you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you've gotten a lot out of it, please be sure to smash that like button. It really helps me in the channel out. If you're new here, please consider clicking subscribe and clicking the bell so that you don't miss any more videos just like this one. All right, thank you so much for hanging with me in my um, kind of terrible Beethoven playing, but hopefully um, better application of his methods into our own kind of jazz repertoire. Thanks again, and I will see you next time.